local news leader, and the Spirit of Community Award winner. This is NBC 10 News at 5. The shot fired Right now, an intense manhunt underway in Washita Parish for an escaped inmate. More on the suspect and how far that search has taken police. Arkansas investigators booking a man for a bogus badge and a gun, but we'll tell you while they're still investigating. Plus, a former Louisiana sheriff could face prison for life. We'll tell you about the serious charges he's facing that date back several decades. A hectic Wednesday. We're covering it all for you. I'm Gordon Boyd. And I'm Michelle e. Martin. Our top story at 5, a manhunt underway right now for an escapee from Green Oaks. This is where police are currently searching with this breaking news this afternoon. It's a large area surrounded by I-20, New Natchitoches Road, Highway 594, and Van Sill Road surrounding the West Lake subdivision. That's where we find our Anna McAllister. Anna, what are police saying about the chase and the latest on the search for this fugitive? Gordon Michelli, it's been nothing short of a chaotic afternoon here in the Vansell Road area of West Monroe. Now, what started off as a typical traffic stop turned into a gun blazing car chase between a minor and police. Now, according to the Washita Parish Sheriff's Office, the suspect is 17 year old Brandon McLean, who is an escapee of the Green Oaks Juvenile Detention Center. After being stopped by law enforcement earlier this afternoon on Cypress Street, he allegedly sped off leading police on to a high-speed car chase, and then he opened fire. He soon pulled over to the Kendallwood Road area where he ditched his car before fleeing on foot. As I was leaving the subdivision, there was a small silver car that cut in front of me. It was going very fast, I would say maybe 50 miles an hour, and they pulled into a driveway there at a house. They were jumping out of the car before the car was even stopped. OPSO and state police are currently spread out all over the area looking for McLean. The entire area near Vansell Road is occupied as the search for McLean continues. Now, McLean is, um, is expected to be and considered to be actually extremely, extremely armed and dangerous. So if you do see him, do not approach him. Please call 911. Now, tune back in at 6 to see what a man who previously had an altercation with McLean has to say about him. Live in West Monroe, Anna McAllister, NBC 10, your local news leader. Thank you, Anna. Now, we were able to get a hold of the scanner traffic from today's pursuit. You'll hear deputies chasing the suspect down Cypress Street and then down Vansell Road. We're going to on 80. We just passed Park now. Suspect vehicle going approximately 95 miles per hour. He's running people off the road. I'm staying at down 80. I'm losing it because people are in the way. We're coming up on the railroad drive. I think he blew a tie. Started in the West Lake subdivision. We're turning out Candlewood. Get on all units. Be advised. You're class 3 on. The shots fired. Shots fired. He's shooting at me. Someone else there, guys, and they need you near 503 Candlewood. Suspect got on a blue bandana armed with a handgun, dressed in all black clothing. Make sure you stay updated with the latest information on this story and all others by going to our website, myarklamist.com. A 17-year-old could face the death penalty in Arkansas for a killing in Urbana last week. 17-year-old Shanson Hooks of Crossit now faces the same charge as 19-year-old Tristan Waller of Urbana. Capital murder. Police say that Hooks and Waller met the two victims for a drug deal and the victims left, but were asked to return to the meetup spot. Both were shot. One died. If convicted, Hooks and Waller could be sentenced to death or life in prison without parole. Law enforcement officers in Arkansas have arrested a man for impersonating a police officer. The Ashley and Chico County Sheriff's Departments are partnering with Portland Police. A man wearing a badge and gun entering a business in Portland, portraying himself as a police officer. The man said he worked for the Chico County Sheriff's Department, but the business had never seen him before. The man is behind bars, but officers want to make sure he didn't make any traffic stops. If anybody has been stopped by an unmarked vehicle or maybe just felt uncomfortable on a stop, uh, probably on Highway 82 East between maybe Montrose and Lake Village to reach out and give us a call. And 
Deputies tell our NBC 10's Gabrielle Pfeiffer about how you can make sure you don't fall victim to a fake officer. We're going to have that coming up for you at 6. A former Louisiana sheriff has been arrested on sex charges dating back four decades. Former St. Tammany Sheriff Jack Strain has been indicted for aggravated rape starting in the late 1970s and continuing into the 80s. The two alleged victims were both younger than 12. He's also accused of aggravated incest on two or more victims younger than 18. Those alleged incidents beginning in 1996 until the mid-2000s. Strain was sheriff during that time. In the fall of 2017, the Louisiana State Police, the FBI, and IRS presented me with evidence that former St. Tammany Parish Sheriff Jack Strain had, engage, had engaged in sex crimes. If found guilty, the DA says that Strain could serve a mandatory, or must serve, a mandatory life sentence. Two people are dead after a small plane crashed on a levee road in St. Landry Parish. The crash happened on the levee at the Atchafalaya River on Spillway Levee Road. That's located near the St. Martin Parish line. The sheriff confirmed the deaths this afternoon. The Federal Aviation Administration is investigating the cause of that crash. Louisiana is full of history, and many cities and towns really do have stories to tell. And the state provides funding for some Main Street communities to help preserve their stories. NBC 10's Brian Briggs visited Winsboro to learn more about the process and how much money it can receive. Brian. Yeah, that's right, Michelle and Gordon. We are surrounded by history here in the Bayou State, and some cities fall into a certain distinguished group that allows them to tell their stories even into 2019. All towns have sort of their thumbprint. They're, they don't all look alike. They're all different. Winsboro is one of 34 Main Street communities in the state that has this distinction. And each year they're eligible for grants that allow the city to preserve itself. And the grants are uh, a 50-50 matching grant um, up to $10,000 from a minimum of $2,500 up to $10,000. In order for a city to receive this distinction, a building must be 50 years old, located within the historic downtown district, and must be for commercial use only, with final approval through the local historic district commission, as well as the Louisiana Main Street office. They also need to follow the interior standards for rehabilitation. It'll, it'll do a lot to get activity back downtown. I've, I've been working extensively on trying to make sure we get broadband internet back. That's one of the big deals. I'm excited about the potential of this grant uh, to, to revitalize uh, the downtown. The grants mainly go towards the upkeep of downtown beautification, and Winsboro has benefited from these grants over the last few years. Now, the grants are given out on an annual basis, and not only will this help give Winsboro a facelift, but will also help them preserve what they value most, their history. Everyone does things differently, but it's how the town developed. You maintain your historic integrity because that's sort of the heartbeat of your community, which is downtown. And the deadline to apply for these grants is at 5 p.m. on June 17th, this coming Monday. If you live in a Main Street community and would like to apply for this grant, more details can be found at myarklimist.com. Live in the Media Control Center, Brian Briggs, NBC10, your local news leader. Brian, thank you. Too many of our veterans come home with wounds we can't see after answering our country's call, but thanks to you and your neighbors, they won't have to go hungry during their struggle to get back on their feet. Our food drive for homeless veterans has brought lots of ready-to-eat snacks and canned goods in, and we're hoping that you can help beat last year's total. We brought in 10 tons. You have until the end of the day to donate. The United Way of Northeast Louisiana says the turnout has been sensational. The turnout is incredible today as we're here at Jackson Street Church of Christ. Their community members have come together, of course, with KRD and KTVE News Station and United Way has come together to support this community. Volunteer group of our co-workers, church partners, Max Fresh Market and Wellspring will be sorting and delivering again tomorrow. Thanks to you, our veterans have the support they need. NBC 10 is your local election headquarters, and this morning we had eight of your voices in Baton Rouge right here in our studio to give us an update on this year's session. State senators and members of the House of Representatives talked with NBC 10 morning anchors about for about an hour. Now, it's something you saw only on myarklimist.com and on our Facebook page. Topics included transportation funding, abortion, term limits, and even more. To see the entire discussion, click on this story on our website, My Everything's not peachy, but the city is still rusting strong. Details on how April's tornado is impacting this year's festival as folks rebuild and recover. And
relief from the scorching summer sun is only a dip away, but don't let it turn deadly. We'll review some safe practices if you plan to use a pool to stay cool. Overall, the sunshine back in today, but the heat and humidity has held off through much of this week. A weak front tonight helps us out, keeps us pleasant through the rest of the work week, but changes in store. Full look at the forecast as NBC 10 News at 5 continues.